Lighthouse Nation, man, I thank God that he woke you up this morning. Listen, do me a favor real quick. Like, share, and get ready to watch this worship. Engage. Lift up your hands where you are, and let's magnify God because service is getting ready to start. So let's go. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Let's give praise to the only one who is worthy of it all. We thank you for joining us this morning. It is prayer time here at the Lighthouse Church. We know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I know that during this pandemic and many other things in people's lives, you've been kind of stagnant, wondering where your next blessing will come from, wondering what it looks like for the next chapter in your life. And I just would like to intercede on you guys' behalf for that on today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, we honor you, we reverence you for who you are, God. We love you, Lord God, and we lift you to the highest of high, Lord God. We know that you are the alpha and the omega. You're the beginning and the end, and you are the author and the finisher of our faith, oh God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for an increase and an outpour of faith, oh God, from only where you can bring it, oh God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that we're going to continue on our path, Lord God. Our steps are order, Lord God, but we trust you, God, with everything in us. We give everything unto you, Lord God. With withholding nothing oh God and we thank you right now Lord God that everything that you're gonna have us to do we're gonna just walk into it God we trust you we believe you and we heard you when you said that the promises of God are yes and amen oh God and we thank you that we are able to stand on your word Lord God into the day of Jesus Christ so we bless you God and we will be encouraged oh God we will encourage others to be encouraged oh God it's in your mighty name your strong name your matchless name God we believe in it to the day that we see it in Jesus name amen come on and bless him with me come on put your hands together right where you are and bless the name of the Lord Jesus for he's worthy of praise hallelujah we come to give him praise honor and glory for his mercy towards us we offer him praise glory to your name Lord Jesus come on let's sing Oh Lord, oh Lord, we give you praise. Hey. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we bless your name. And we lift our voices. We lift our voices.
fruit of your lips, we. Praise, we are for praise. Oh. Come on, let's sing it one more time. We are for praise. season he has provided great is thy faithfulness oh Lord unto me hallelujah come on lift your hands in the presence of a king God we love you you're so mighty you're so strong hallelujah there's nothing too hard for him Anybody excited that we have a friend in Jesus? Hallelujah. He's the greatest man I know. I'm so glad that I can call him friend. And I'm even gladder that he calls me friend. Hallelujah. See what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins. And leave the bear. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. 
take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Say, take it to the Lord. In prayer. Say, take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Say, take it to the Lord. In prayer. Say, take it to the Lord. Everything, everything. Oh, yes, 
sing to God. on him because he cares for you. Help me sing it like you really want to sing it. Say it. Come on and sing it. Come on and sing it. Come on and sing it. Somebody's life depends on it. Chauncey, pick it up. And oh, what peace we often fall over. Kofia, come on. And oh, singing a home, what needless pain we bear. Tati, and it's not half, but it's what? Let's all sing it together. What are we taking to him? Hallelujah. There's a sweet spirit in this place. I know protocol says we're supposed to go on and preach, Erica, but it feels like the room is filled, and, and I know it is. It may be empty of people, but it is full of the Holy Ghost. So we, 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 I heard an old preacher say, why go through all of that to invite him here and then rush to get to the next place when he comes? Jesus, 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 there is something about that name master savior jesus like a fragrance after the rain oh, Jesus that's his name Jesus Jesus let all heaven and earth proclaim King Kingdoms may all pass away. Somebody out there watching, I want you to know there is something about. There is something about. 
There is something about that name. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Holy Spirit. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are he who is and is to come. Thank you for being the fairest of ten thousands. Thank you for being water in dry places, bridge over troubled waters, bright and morning star, lily of the valley. We thank you, God, that you're a healer when we're sick. We thank you, God, that you're bread when we're hungry. We thank you that you are a provider. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shekinu. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! 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 Oh! Hallelujah! 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 Oh! We bless your name. 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 Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> you know, it don't, it don't take a whole lot to worship them. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of people to do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're, reach, you're reaching somebody in New York City. You, th this ain't about Houston. This, this ain't about Texas. The earth is the Lord's. The, the fullness thereof. You're ministering to people in Nigeria. You're, you're ministering to people in London. You, you're ministering to people in Australia. You're, you're ministering to people. Somebody needed this today. Somebody needed this today. Somebody needed this this Sunday morning. Somebody needed it. Somebody needed it. Somebody was about to give up. Somebody was about to throw in the towel. But God specializes in knowing what you need. Anybody know you know what you need? I hear this in my spirit. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. No, yeah. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Cause he won't, he won't ever give up on you. No, 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 no. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't.
he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you one more time, yeah. Don't give up on God. He won't <laughs> give up on you. I'm trying to move on. I, I don't know how I, what we got, about 30 more minutes before the service ends, but, but somebody needed to know in Tennessee, don't give up on God. Will I know he won't give up on you? Don't give up on God. In Florida, I'm here to give you a testimony. He won't, he won't give up on you. I know it, Tati. I know it. I know it. is worthy he's worthy to be praised oh, praise him <laughs> I'm trying to stop seriously praise him there's an oil in this room on the instruments praise him I don't care what you're going through, you ought to praise, you ought to praise him. Oh, Jesus, that blessed Savior, he's worthy to. Y'all want to sing that? Be, come on, let's sing that. Oh, come on and say it. Pray. Oh, na, na, na. Anybody know you got to praise him? Praise in the midnight hour. Praise in the midst of your storm. Jesus. What's his name? What is he? From the rising. From the rising of the sun. Come on, let's sing it. From the rising. Come on and minister, he's worthy.
Jesus. Jesus. Stay right there, say Jesus. Jesus. Stay right there, say Jesus. Jesus. What's his name? Call his name. The lily of the valley, his name is Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be Somebody shout, yeah. Or oh, don't act like don't act like you need to try. I said somebody shout, yeah. Yeah. Somebody will watch this and say, what, what's all that going on? They must be faking. But I bet you, you can tell them, you don't know what he's done for me. Hallelujah. If you can't do it in an empty room, you ain't going to be able to do it in heaven. I guess somebody, everybody in this house and watching today, give God Let the church say yes. We gotta go. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. My 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 soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Lord, yeah, Lord, oh, my, 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 yeah, Lord, it has the undercover, yes, Lord, see, see, the reason why I'm doing this is some of y'all don't know the Lord sent me here this morning to prevent an attack on you. He sent me over here with a glory because the devil had something planned for you. And God sent me here to tell you God blocked it. He blocked it. The Holy Spirit blocked it. He blocked it. Something's about to change. Something's about to change. Something's about to happen. You at home, something is about to happen. 
something is about to change. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And thank you that every tongue that rises up against us shall be condemned. Thank you for the rhema word that the hedge that you had put around this ministry, these people, these minstrels, those who are watching, that you just blocked it. And we thank you. As my grandmother used to say, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And we thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you are wonderful. If we had 10,000 tongues, we'd just say thank you, you, Lord. Oh, I just want to thank you, you Lord. Been so good, you've been oh, so But you are so good. So, so good. Yeah, yeah. I just want to. We gotta go, but the. Let's all say he made a way, made a way. Made a way. Made a way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, you may. No. We'll just stop it right there and say, I just want. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, <sighs> but what I really want to do, and, and those of y'all who are at home this morning, like, I don't know if this has happened since we've been in a pandemic, it's... You're literally, you're literally a spectator today because this ain't how it was supposed to go. So, but here's the truth. I, I was on my way to church today. I was speaking to the mayor of our city on the phone. And he made this announcement to me. He said, I'm getting ready to make an announcement that churches can open back up. And he said, that the governor is saying 25% and he's saying that's a safe thing as long as you're wearing masks and you're social distancing. And then he said one of our prominent pastors in the city had made an announcement that they were opening up next month in October. And as I drove up, I started to see you here. As I walked in the room, for the first time in a long time, I felt it was possible to shake your hand again and it was possible to prophesy over you over the altar and I, and I and I started to hear the prayers of the righteous because people were just about to give up you you were about to give up and you're about to quit and, and just when it felt like everything was over I got the call that we'll be able to come back together again and so now we go from not knowing what to do to planning for what's next and God told me to tell you that what's coming is better than what's been. We're going to see each other again soon.
So what you're witnessing right now, I think the Holy Spirit said, I needed to saturate the place before the people walked in. I needed to cleanse the house of any foul spirit. I needed to cleanse the house of any agenda. I needed to cleanse the house because my people are getting ready to return, not just to church, but return unto me. And I think we had to prove that we could get in his presence without the people. Because if we can do it in an empty room, we can do it when the people show up. Normally right now, I would just have our singers go sit down, but this is what I want to do. I want you all, before you do anything, and it won't be long, but I need you to hear what the Holy Spirit has given me today. Because it's not a sermon, it's a message. For every volunteer in the room, again, those of y'all who are watching at home, you just really stumbled up on us this Sunday morning, and we are in the presence of the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't leave if I were you, because I believe that God has shown me one of the biggest, if not the biggest, tactic that the enemy uses to keep you stuck. So I don't have a sermon today, literally. I got one scripture, one verse, but I've got a message, and over the next two weeks, what I'm going to give you, listen, not only will it help you spiritually, hear me, if you listen to me over the next two weeks, I am going to help you with your mental health. Because I am learning that if you're not mentally healthy, you will not be spiritually consistent. You can shout on Sunday, but if your head is messed up, you'll walk right out the door and everything will go back to where I, over the next two weeks, I'm only asking you for two weeks. I believe over the next two weeks, not sermons, these will not be the best sermons I've ever preached, but these will be two of the strongest messages I've ever delivered. I want you at home to look in your Bible in James chapter 1, verse 19. Uh, you all can do whatever. I don't know what you all have to do. I know this is, guys, if you're watching, we really, we are really, everybody's just standing up in here. All of our volunteers and cameramen, they're just staring at me. I've come in here and messed up the whole order. But the Holy Spirit's in charge. James 1 and 19. Will, I promise you, I promise you, God gave me this. Now, I, I, sometimes, because I'm a preacher, I have to find messages, and people will say to me online, Pastor, you should talk about X, Y, and Z. Thought would pop in my head and say, that's a good thing for this season. This didn't have nothing to do with a direct message. This didn't have nothing to do with a series. God told me to say this, okay? And it's, it was for me first. And let me tell you something about a message. A sermon is convicting. A message is convicting. See, it has to get you before it gets you. So know this thing Josh got me way before I put it on paper for you. This thing that I am about to give you, if you hear me and you don't treat it like every other message you hear, I was here, I heard it, I'll apply 5-10% of it when I feel like it, if I remember it, and then I go, if you do that, it ain't going to help you. But if you take this thing, Put this one on me, Jay. If you take this and you apply this word to your life, here is my guarantee to you. This will be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. It won't be amazing. You're not getting ready to shout. You're, 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 you're probably going to have so many notes that you won't be able to read them or you will be so awestruck you won't have any notes at all. James 1, 19 says, Wherefore, my brethren, let every man, that's not a man, that's a person. It's anthropos in the Greek, all human beings. Let every human being be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. I want to talk to you on this subject. The dangers of defensiveness. The dangers 
of defensiveness. I would, listen, if you all would just put your mics where they are and just sit in this section, just sit in this section right here. For those of you all at home, turn everything off that doesn't have anything to do with what I'm saying right now. Don't try to hear me and cook. Don't try to hear me and be on social media. Turn off everything. Give me your undivided attention. And because it's undivided, I will not be long. The Lord gave me this to give to the people. This isn't a sermon. This is a message. All right? And it is perhaps the biggest tactic the devil uses to keep you stuck. It is, it is perhaps the biggest tactic the enemy uses to keep you stuck. This tool the, that the devil uses and will always use because it will always work is equipped, listen to me, to keep you in a pattern of defensiveness as opposed to responsiveness. Hear me well. Now, look, I got a lot of sports players in here. And a lot of you all have played sports with me. The hardest part of any game is defense. In fact, the greatest players in the world, they actually work hard on defense and they rest on offense. Why? Because when you're on offense, you get to determine what happens next. You can dribble the ball five times if you want and get your breath. You can walk to the screen, but when you're on defense, you have to work hard. I was talking to a good friend of mine, Moochie Norris, the other day. He played point guard for the Rockets. I asked him, I said, who was the hardest guy in the NBA to guard? I thought he was going to say Michael Jordan. I thought he was going to say Kobe Bryant. He said Allen Iverson was the hardest person he ever had to guard. I said, AI? Now, he was a beast. He was a beast, but he wasn't 6'5". He wasn't 6'7". He wasn't 220. He was a buck something about that high. Why? He said the reason why Allen Iverson was so hard to guard is because for 48 minutes, he never stopped moving. <laughs> Don't y'all miss this. Please, please, if you're looking to be excited at home, please, this is not going to be the one. I need your attention. I want you to act like you just paid $1,000 to be in a class to set yourself free. He said, hey, I was so hard to guard because whether it was offense or defense, he kept running and he kept moving and he never stopped moving. He came off the screens at the same speed. He went off the screen at the same speed. He came off the screen with the ball at the same speed. He passed and ran. He cut. He never stopped. And he had more energy. And it was hard to guard him because when you're on defense, you are at the mercy of the offender. You got to stick with what you do. It's what they call making you play their game. And the enemy understands that when you are a retaliator, he knows how to get you to play his game. But the problem is you ain't good at it. Thank you so much for being with us today. I know it's a little unorthodox how we're worshiping, but I just have to break away real quick to let you know it's time to give. And when worship is proceeding like that, it is always good to make sure you're sowing into a fertile ground. It's our tithe and offering period, and we are cheerful givers. And everything you do helps us to make sure we do what God has called us to do, whether it's to clothe the naked, whether it's to feed the hungry, whether it's to minister to people who are in need. Uh, we're, we're talking to one of our members right now who just had a major surgery and is bleeding right now, and her prayers are going up, and yours need to attach with that. But we can do things for families like that when you are faithful in your giving. So the instructions are coming up on the bottom of the screen right now. They're going to show you how you can give through our app. You can text to give. You can give online any way you want to do it. And I want to thank the people who have actually driven to the physical location, dropped your tithes and offering are, or just mailed them in from other cities and states. And to my Lighthouse 2.0 members, thank you so much for using Givelify. We are thankful for your contributions. Now, I've got to get back to this word because there is something at the end of this message called a no-block policy that you've got to get. Check this out. 
when you're on defense, you are at the mercy of the offender. Whenever you are defensive to somebody who has offended you, you are at their mercy. And they will keep you moving because as long as you're on defense and they know what makes you mad and they know what buttons to push and they know what to say to make you angry and they know where your soft spots are, you're always running around trying to make sure that nobody finds out. You're always trying to run around trying to figure out how to keep your reputation, how, how to keep people from knowing you're really crazy and, and how to make sure that nobody finds out how you really reacted and, and how can I keep people from knowing how bad my mouth is and how do I keep people from knowing that was actually me and how do I keep people from knowing that I cuss when I leave church. And so we're all defensive all over the place. We're all defensive and, and we're running around and, and defense is the hardest part of any game and it is the hardest part of life. The dangers of defensiveness. Listen to this. I'm going to give you practical tools on, not, on how not to be defensive as well, but I want to get this into your head. How do you discover Here's the first question. How do I discover, Tiffany, if I am a defensive person? Because for the most part, most of us are absent on diagnosis day. When there is a diagnosis, we tend, anybody guilty but me, we tend to think of who this message is for. We start thinking, yep, my spouse, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my husband, my wife, my child, my mother, my sister, my brother. Right now, most people in the world are thinking, who needs to hear this message? But the problem with thinking about who needs to hear this message is that is you overlooking the providence of God because everybody God wants to hear this message is hearing it. If God wanted your mama to hear it, he would have made somebody give it to her. If he would have wanted your brother to have it, he would have made sure your brother had it. If he wanted your spouse to have it. But why is it that God gave it to you first and then to them? Why did God first go to the Jew, then the Gentile? Why does God choose the order that he chooses? Because God wants us to hear this. Now listen to me. Most of us are typically defensive when we are in the face of a real or either a perceived criticism. Nobody likes to be criticized. Nobody likes to be criticized. So when we're in the face of a criticism, we get defensive. And I've discovered, this is your first note if you haven't taken a note yet. Listen to me. I've discovered that the more your soul is at rest, the better you are at handling the disapproval of others. The more your soul is at rest, the better you are at handling criticisms. The reason why most of us explode so quickly is because there is an unrest in our soul that we never explain. We are still mad about who didn't. We're still mad about who should have. We're still mad about what could have. We're still mad about what didn't happen. And so we're unrested in our soul. And when your soul is unrested, your flesh reacts. When your soul is unrested, your soul reacts. Here's the first thing you need to know. Defensiveness is a mode. Everybody say mode. M-O-D-E. Defensiveness is a mode. I have an SUV. I drive a little SUV, and it, there is a knob in the middle of it. And when I turn that knob, it has about six modes on it. One, it has four by four. When, when, it's, when it's water, I've got two buttons I can push, the car will raise up an entire foot. If I'm in water and it's slippery, I can put it on an anti-like brake system because when, when you don't have anti-like brakes, what actually happens is the brakes will smash your wheels once, and it, but when you have anti-like brakes, it does it multiple times because it slows it down faster. I've got that. I've got, I've got another button that when I'm going downhill, I can push it so the car won't keep rolling. I've got another button that when I'm going uphill, I can push it so the car won't go back. I've got, a, I've got modes, and with every mode, there is a picture of the terrain, and so I don't have to think about it. I can push that mode, but, Cody, it only works if I push the button before the tragedy. <laughs> okay? I can't already be sliding and then hit the button. I can't already have water in the car 
and then push the button. I can't, all, I can't already be going down the hill and decide, oh, I got to hit this button because by that time I'm already in somebody's hood or somebody's trunk. I've got to pre-select the button. And here is what I am telling people who are defensive. Every time you are defensive, what you have shown me is you don't know where you are, so you didn't know how to choose. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't know yourself. You don't know what pushes your buttons. You don't know what makes you angry. So when you don't know yourself, you cannot pre-select a decision. You, so you got to learn, listen, who, who gets on your nerve? You got to know those people. What, what things bring up an ugliness inside of you? Who at your job gets on your nerve? What words, what things when you are challenged, what gets on your nerve? So when that happens, you've got to pre-select because if you do not pre-select, you will self-destruct. Hear me when I'm telling you. I told you it's not a sermon. It's a message. Defensiveness is a mode that has to be pre-selected. Here is another thing you must know. You must know the difference between responding and reacting. I'm going to give you the difference. Responding is a counter. Reacting is retaliation. Now, anybody watch UFC? Anybody watch boxing? It, 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 if you have ever watched UFC or watched boxing, I, and I do this all the time, I will Google knockouts. I just love to see people get knocked out. I don't know why. I'm not particularly fond of it myself because you knock me out, you better move out the country because I'm coming back. I'm not a quitter. But I, I love to see people get knocked out. I'll see somebody get hit. But <laughs> have you ever seen this? <laughs> Jacob, you ever seen a dude get knocked out? The swing after the knockout is just horrible. Have you all ever seen that? He gets hit and he just... He, he just, he just, it's a reaction. It ain't going to hurt. It, it wouldn't hurt, even hurt if it landed. Why? Because, because he, got, he got knocked out. Listen to this. Because after the person hits you, after the person hits you, what happens is something happens and you can get a concussion and all that. I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you, they say the lights go out. And the lights go out. And if you ever seen somebody get knocked out, their body freezes in a position. Even when they're on the ground, their muscles tense up. It freezes in a position. This is what you don't know about the devil. The devil knows your freeze position every time he hits you. He knows where you're going to stop. He knows when you're going to stop. He knows how you're going to stop. He knows who you're going to stop talking to. He knows who you're going to cut off. He knows who you're going to walk away from. So he'll hit you so you'll freeze. Because when you freeze, you're open game. And here's the problem with the devil. Ain't no referee that gets in the ring and says, enough is enough. Sometimes God has to turn you over to the enemy. Y'all not hearing me. He'll have to turn you over to the enemy to show you that he is your defense. You've got to stop reacting and start responding. In other words... You don't want to be a person who loves to retaliate. You want to be a person who knows how to respond. Because when you are a person who likes to retaliate, you're always behind the person who's the offender. It, it, does that make sense? Again, let's go back to sports. Have you ever saw a guy come down the court, shoot a three? He hits it. If you're not a three-point shooter, it makes no sense for you to come down there to show the three-point shooter, I'm going to hit one too. That ain't your area. That's not what you do. You got to stick with what you do. It's what they call making you play their game. And the enemy understands that when you are a retaliator, he knows how to get you to play his game. But the problem is you ain't good at it. You ain't good at hating. You're not good. Your blessings won't abound when you hold grudges. It works for them, but it doesn't work for you. God won't bless you with a promotion on your job when you are trying to connive and get other people in trouble. It doesn't work for you. It works for the world, but it doesn't work for you. And when you get off your game, you lose the game. That's why we're losing because in this economy, in this economy, COVID-19, people losing jobs. Do you know? that we don't live in this world's economy 
and that it is quite possible, I know for me, and I don't know for some of you, but some of you all are watching, I bet, and I've talked to people, COVID-19 for people in the household of faith has been some of the best months of their life. Can I tell you that we have to be delivered from being defensive? That every time somebody says something to you, you got to resist whatever that anxiety, that urge it is to say, okay, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them who they're talking to. I'm going to show them who they're messing with. When you respond, it's a pre-selected mode. When you react, you've already lost control. You've already lost control. Listen to this. I, uh, at home, I've got an adjustable bed frame underneath my mattress, and it has a remote control. And so if I push the button, the feet will lift up. And, and sometimes when I'm watching basketball, the back will lift up. It, it, it got another button on it, it'll vibrate and massage you. It, it got all kind of stuff on it. Yeah, yeah, I got it like that. I do have one. I'm going to tell you that right now. I done had it a long time. And, 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 and so now I done had it about 10 years, though. But here's the thing. Just the other day, the foot part got stuck up, and I, I, I couldn't get the foot down. So for three days... Boy, all the swelling went out of my ankle. I'm telling you, I, 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 my feet been up for three days, and I was so frustrated because I like to sleep on my side. Now, imagine sleeping on your side with your feet all the way up here. So I'm stuck sleeping on my back. Jake, I can't sleep on my back, so I'm, I'm rolling over. I'm trying to stay on the couch as long as possible. I've done everything I can. I changed the batteries. I did everything I could. So I called in to the adjustable frame people, and they went through all of this kind of stuff. Here's what they told me. They said, oh. We found out the problem. Uh, you need a new, new remote control. And here's the thing. Now, you know when you're trying to fix something, you know when you're trying to work something, you keep pushing it. So here I am being silly. The feet are up, but I'm trying to see if it's working. So I push it again. It's like, so now I keep pushing it. Now it's 10 inches higher than it really needed to be because I needed to prove to myself that I, that I knew what to do. And so they said, it's a remote. Now watch this. Every button on the remote control worked except the down button. Every button worked except the down button. So I had to wait three days on them to send me another remote, listen to me, so that I could reprogram the remote to the frame so that I could let the feet down. Are y'all hearing me? No matter what I did, every button worked, but when I pushed that button, I got no response. I kept pushing it. I changed the batteries. I got no response. Do you know how many things you are stuck in? Because when God pushes that button, you will not respond. He keeps smashing it. He keeps pressing it. He keeps holding it. But you won't put your temper down. You won't put your attitude down. You won't put your hands down. You won't put your anger down. You won't lay aside the weight that so easily doth beset you. And here you are stuck in an uncomfortable position. God sent me to tell you that just like the remote, you can be replaced. And let me tell you, when I got that remote, even though I had that remote, Pierre, for 10 years, the moment I got the new one, I threw the old one away like I never knew it. Don't you let God say, I've been pushing you and investing in you and putting you around great people and giving you great opportunities. For year after year after year, I've been pressing you and pushing you toward the mark. If you don't respond soon, I'm sending a replacement. No. I'm sending a replacement. And let me tell you something. When I, when I got that replacement, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're hearing me wherever you are. It only took the bed 30 seconds to accept something new. It ain't going to take people long to get over you when God sends something new. It ain't going to take, listen, when God gets rid of you and sends somebody else in, he'll make the transition easy. You better make sure that if God is pressing you, you respond. I'm pushing the button right now to tell you that your defensiveness has you stuck. Stuck mad. Stuck angry. Stuck vindictive. 
You can't forgive. You know how to pretend, but you can't forgive. Just because y'all still holding hands don't mean y'all forgave each other. Just because you kissed goodbye, good morning don't mean you forgave each other. Because if we dig deep down, the button still doesn't work. Stuck in defensiveness. Can I tell you? The devil almost had me, man. Oh, he was, listen, I, I, ain't, I am not scolding you. I'm giving you my testimony. He almost had me. He almost had me. I fought that joke off with everything I had. He almost had me. I was stuck. I was stuck. I was stuck. I was stuck. But I recognized that when you're stuck, you look weird. When you're stuck, you know how hard it is to make up a stuck bed? You're not imagining it. It's already hard to put them stretchy sheets on in the first place. But how you putting it on when one part up in the air and the other part down here? Stuck. Stuck. Now I'm uncomfortable because it's stuck. It's stuck. I'm not even stuck. Which means that when you're stuck, you can also make everybody else around you uncomfortable. Stuck. Stuck in a grudge. Stuck. Because you can't let it go stuck. Because they ain't apologized. Okay. Stuck. Because they didn't say sorry. Stuck. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're doing everything they need to do, when they need to do it, how they need to do it, and ain't nothing worse than being anointed and stuck. How in the world are they getting more done with no anointing? And you can't do it and the Holy Ghost lives in your house because you're stuck. What do you do? When everything somebody thinks about you triggers a reaction. I'm telling you, the devil's been using this against us. And we all have an inner reaction to every message that triggers an outer reaction. For some of us, it's a temper, right? Let's, let's be honest. It's, it's anger. Like, you could go from zero to 100, and you won't even know how you got there. Before you know it, the kitchen table's already broke. Before you know it, your fist is already through the door. <laughs> you, you're struggling to pay rent. How are you going to get the wall fixed? I, I was watching Instagram the other day. I saw two people arguing in the parking lot. The cars were not new, but yet they were running into each other. Now, they needed new cars, but here they are running into each other because of their anger. Did y'all see the, I know y'all watch, if you're watching me, I know you got a social media account. Did y'all see the girl who was pouring pop soda in the car and cutting the seats early in the morning? Y'all saw that one? She was cutting it early in the morning. But she's going to go to jail. I'm trying to figure out how much time is a Sprite in the back seat worth? Defensive. She said, I'm the wrong one to mess with. I'm the wrong one to mess with. I know y'all seen it. Come on. Now. I'm the wrong one to mess with. And you might be the wrong one to mess with, but not because you can stab somebody, but because the Lord will fight your battles. Now, you ain't seen nobody defend you like God can. You, you can't get nobody together like God can. You can't, you can't rectify the situation like God can. You cannot even the score like God can. I am telling you that I am fully aware that the enemy has used defensiveness to keep us from our destiny. Now, here's the problem. In order to win a game, you got to score. So what good is it if you keep if you play good defense and you keep them from scoring, but you can't put the ball in the basket or in the end zone or in the goal, you, 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 have, to, you have to make some decisions. You have to be offensive. You, you've got to be pre-selected. You've got to make sure that your buttons work. I'm going to say this, and I promise you I'm done because this was a message, not a sermon. I hope it helped you. What I have last for you, I think, is the icing on the cake. This is for every person who's in any type of relationship. It do, I'm not just talking about 
spouse. I'm talking about brother, sister, 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 cousin, nephew. Listen to me. There was something in psychology called a no-block policy. And I am telling you that after you recognize that defensiveness is a mode, and after you recognize your modes, and after you figure out how to adjust, I need you to adopt a no-blocking policy. All right. I remember <clears throat> uh, they used to have a show back in the day called Whose Line Is It Anyway? It's an improv show. Now, for me, my, my favorite improv show, Wild and Out. I can watch Wild and Out all day long. And um, there is a game called Keep It in the Classroom. Y'all know that game? Keep it in the classroom. So you, and so it doesn't matter what the person in the desk says. If they say something about pizza, you have to make sure that what you say after that rhymes with what they said. You can't go in a different direction. You can't say whatever you want. What you say next is determined by what they said. It's really the basics of improv. So, so for instance, if I'm a police officer uh, in the improv and I take on the role of a police officer, you don't even know it. I just say I'm a police officer and I say, Chauncey, I am pulling you over because you were going 40 miles per hour in a 15 uh, zone and, and you are speeding motorists. You don't get to say in improv, I wasn't speeding. In improv, the rule is that whatever I say, you have to go along with it. You just have to go with it. You just have to go with it. That's the rules of improv. So if I say, hey, why were you speeding? You don't get to say, I wasn't speeding like you would in real life. Improv says, I have to say something like, oh, I didn't recognize I was speeding. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm talking about a no-block policy. If this is true, then it correlates into relationships that whenever you are criticized, you have to have an improv. You have to have a no-block policy. So if your spouse says, you are disrespectful, you don't get to say, I disagree. Improv says, you have to say, how have I been disrespectful? <laughs> this is killing y'all because it killed me. I ain't, I ain't a master, but I know how to teach it. Listen, I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to digest, but here it is. Listen, it requires cooperation. One of the rules is that you're not allowed, listen, to contradict what the other person introduces. Are you with me so far? So, this is what causes us to be so defensive in relationships because anytime we are accused, we think we get to determine whether the person was right about the accusation. You hurt my feelings. No, you just emotional. Wrong. <laughs> fighting words. Uh, listen, anybody who ever been in anything, those fighting words. You, you, uh, y'all help me out. Anybody, give me a phrase. I'll tell you right now. Anybody at home, y'all tweet it and put it on the, on the timeline. They'll tell me and I'll see if I can get it. Somebody just give me a phrase that, that's common in the argument real quick. You hurt my feelings. No, I didn't. You just always tripping. You, I, no, I'm not inconsiderate. You just spoil. I don't always do nothing. You just always use the word always. I ain't selfish. Your mama just gave you everything, and I ain't about to be your mama. I, okay, now y'all stop, because I don't want nobody to fight me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm playing the improv. This is an act. This is an act. I'm, 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 just, I'm just up here acting right now. And the problem is, is that that is a defensive mechanism. Why? Because when you tell a person what you are not or what you have not done, then they have a responsibility within themselves to prove the accusation. All right? Now, here are blocking phrases. Y'all ready for some? Because I've used them. Somebody say some of you. Well, what about when you... I ain't say no when you, same thing. At least I'm not. And this is the one that we think <laughs> that we should be able to see. 
I don't agree. <laughs> Still blocking. You blowing this out of proportion. Blocking. How then do you lay your guard down and not be defensive even when you don't feel guilty? I'm going to give you tools. You're inconsiderate. I see your point. Now, what's somebody going to say after you say that? I see your point. They can't say anything because you've just taken the ball from them. Now they're on defense. Y'all missing it. You just stole the ball. You just stole the ball. I, 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 what was the other one uh, that you said? Somebody said, okay, you said, you're selfish. The part I agree with with that is I just stole the ball. I just stole it. I just stole it. Now, now here's what's going to happen to the person who's defensive. Oh, you just trying to be smart. You antagonizing me. No, I actually agree with you. I actually agree with you. I think that in certain instances, I have actually been selfish. What you going to say? You don't care nothing about me. I'm sorry you feel that way. I actually do. You just like your mama. That's her fault because she raised me. You're absolutely right. You don't treat me re with respect. I need to give that some thought. See, these are no blocking policies that remove you from being defensive. Because, listen to me, if you've ever seen anybody play great defense, they have to be put in the game and taken out of the game constantly. It is impossible to play great defense the entire game. The person. Now, if you play sports, you know that the reason why, this ca why you're capable, why we are capable of playing defense in basketball is because it's five of us. They have something called help side. Because when the person gets beat, I can leave my man and go help, and somebody else can rotate, and everybody will be covered. But when you are playing games in life, it's mano a mano, man to man, woman to man, devil against you. And you ain't got no help but the Lord. You don't have no help but the Lord. You, when your mother and father forsakes you, that lets you know that it happens if the scripture says it. Joseph shows you that what your brothers will do if it gets tough. So when you're in that one-on-one -on -one thing, you can't be on defense. You have to lay your ego aside. Ego. E G O. Ego stands for edging God out. Whenever your ego is in charge, you have taken God out of the out of the system. I I came to tell you today that I have discovered what God has done to a race, to a group, to a specificity of people, it keeps us, the devil keeps us defensive. We're defensive. And every time we get close to breakthrough, we go back to being defensive. I was, I was appalled every time I saw a young black man killed in the last 15, 20 years of my life, I've seen it a lot, but here lately we all know what has happened and it's been crazy and I was appalled. I stand against all bigotry. I stand against all racism. I stand against it all. Let me tell you, 
what happens to a people who become defensive. Two police officers in California were in their car. And the young man comes up and does the unthinkable and shoots these two officers in the head. And I start to read the comments. And I saw people say stuff like, that's what they get because if they wasn't shooting us, it wouldn't happen to them. Despicable. If it's wrong for the goose, it's wrong for the gander. Which means that if we are against black people being shot, we have to be against white people being shot. We have to be against police officers being shot. And when you are defensive, you think other people deserve your pain. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but I don't care. You cannot, you cannot be okay with somebody suffering your same pain so you can feel better about you. That is the epitome of defensiveness. I want you to get to the point where you do, this is what the Bible says, do good to those who do bad to you. The Bible says, if you do good to only those who do good to you, what praise should you get? Even sinners do that. He says, but if they give you a stone, you give them bread. In actuality, the opposite of defensiveness is me taking care of you while you're trying to get over on me. And if you get to that place, I promise you, you will be blessed. Yesterday, 24 hours exactly, this time yesterday, I'm talking to Bishop on the phone, and he says to me that his mentor gave him some simple advice. I'm going to end this sermon with it. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. It ain't going to be deep because this sermon wasn't deep. It ain't going to be a message. I can't show it to you in Scripture, but I heard it from a person who has conquered the world who heard it from a person who conquered his world. The secret to living a good life, listen, trusting the Lord and doing good to people, and you shall eat of the fat of the land. That's it. Trust God. Do good to people, and you shall eat of the fat of the land. It doesn't matter what they did to you. What mold do you preselect in your floods, in your hills, in your valleys, in your anger? What preselected mold? Because it is called forgive, which means it's a decision that happens before you're offended. Before, forgive. You have to choose who you're going to be even before they define you. I am honored that you gave me this many minutes of your day. On a Sunday morning, I'm sure you didn't want to hear this. I'm sure this is thrown all that you had planned out of whack. Our, our music team, they've got more work to do here today, and I've messed up their entire day. But would you settle for an inconvenient day to have a life and having that light more abundant. I have seen the lightning flashing. I used to say that because my granddaddy said it. Now I say it because I've smelled the smoke of the flash. I have been through the fire and there are days I don't even smell like smoke. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. Defensiveness destroys. No blocking. Somebody has an opinion of you, you have a responsibility 
to accept it and roll with it, even if they're wrong. Validating somebody's opinion does more than trying to defend your position. When you validate somebody else's opinion, it leaves them room to find out if they're wrong. But when you defend it, it makes them think they're right. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. God, right now in the name of Jesus, I don't know who this message was for. I know you gave it to me. You gave it to me on this day for the people who were alive to hear it this day. You said it to me in the car today. Something's about to change. This world is about to shift, and it's already shifting. But as we move into the year of 2021, this church is moving into its 11th year. And I want to let you know, because I don't, I don't, this, we're not going to reveal this like a surprise and aha, this is what the Lord told me. He says the church is in its 11th year, one and one. It's the same on both sides. He says, I'm bringing balance back. God says, I'm getting ready to bring balance back to your life. I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to tip the scales for you. It's going it's to balance out. 11, one on the left, one on the right. God says, I'm getting ready for every struggle you had. I'm about to give you some success. I'm, I'm going to balance this thing out for you. You've been stuck in the house for nine months. You have been frustrated. You are angry. You are about to give up. God says, just hold on. I'm about to balance that thing out. Trust the words that are coming out of my mouth. I release this and prophesy in the name of Jesus. God's about to make your crooked places straight. He's about to make rivers and deserts. He's about to bring your mountains down so you can walk over them instead of have to climb them. Mark the words of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Let's worship. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the Let's sing it one more time. We give you all We give you all, we give you all.
service, we thank God for Pastor who always gives us a life-changing word that shifts us into new dimensions for our destiny. Listen, you have an opportunity right now. Don't let this moment pass. Look down below on the screen. You have an opportunity to sow into good ground. Though the church doors are open, you are the church and we want you to join our family. So right now, if you don't have a church home or if you've heard something that's worked in your spirit and excited you, text LH Nation to 84576 and join our family. And listen, I would be remiss if I did not offer the prayer of salvation to you. Listen, God is a good, good father. He is great in all that he does, and he wants you. He wants you to be close to him. He wants you to come into his family, into his fold. You can be grafted in right now. He protects us and covers us. So let me just pray with you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that every ear under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that, it's, that you soften their hearts, that you soften their minds, Lord God, to desire to be closer to you. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would just continue to do a work in our hearts, continue to clean us up, Lord God, that we would be able to lift our holy hands to you, Lord God, and give you glory in all that we do. Those that may be suffering with depression, those that may be suffering with anxiety, Lord God, we know you are a good, good Father, and the plans that you have for us are good and to do us no harm. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood over everyone tuned into this stream, God, and we pray that you would snatch them out of darkness and bring them into your marvelous light, oh God, and that you would be exalted in their lives, that they will fully commit and confess that you are their Lord, that you are their Savior. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over your children, and we seal this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We love you, and we'll see you Tuesday.